You know what time it is. Showtime. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Showtime with the Apollos. I am Brent Allen, your host, joined as always by my man, Ren Daxt. Ren, how's it going over there tonight, buddy? It is. I feel isolated over here in my little box, but I'm, I'm good. Isolated? Yeah. I'm all by myself. But you got me over here. That's true. That's true. There are barriers, but yeah, I'm fine. everything's good, man. Very good, very good. I got. I must say, Ren, we were talking about this a little before. You're looking, you're looking quite sharp tonight. Yeah, <laughs> <the> <laughs> you see what camera. I did there. <laughs> yeah, the HD camera decided to work, which is uh, which is always good when you're, you know, simulcasting on YouTube. Uh, that's a, uh, that's a thumbs up from from me and everybody else. But uh, what about uh, talk about looking sharp? I mean, Steve Spurrier, the fun and gun, goes into the snow and. Pulls out a victory. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would call that one sharp, but it was certainly uh, it was an interesting game to watch for sure. Uh, of course, for those listening, we are not talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this particular time. We are talking about the Orlando Apollos, the Alliance League. We're talking about their fourth game of the season. So we're just about to the halfway mark of the season where they went out to Salt Lake City, took on the Salt Lake City Stallions, played in the snow so much that they couldn't even tell what was going on on the field, like where it was a hash mark or a yard line or something like that. Like it it just it was not okay. Those guys were slipping, sliding around. Uh, But as you mentioned, Ren, our Apollos pulled out the win 20 to 11, 20. Yeah, I think that was it. 20 to 11. We should probably know that. We should probably know that, yeah. Yeah. I actually <laughs> but, I mean, I had it. The it's first half was pretty it bad. It was. As far as the snow uh, you yeah. know, went. And the, the offense sort of, you know, uh, I guess reflected that. You know, I like to think that, you know, Spurrier came out and said, well, look, it's snowing. We're going to run the ball. Tried mm-hmm. it for the first two series and just went, ah, well, we're not moving it, running it. Let's, uh, let's just – let's throw it like we always do. Mm-hmm. And – uh yeah, and you know they got down in the red zone twice. You know, or got close to it and had to kick a, kick a couple of field goals there in the first half. But then in the second half, when they came out, you know they they scored on their they scored a touchdown the first two times they had the ball. Yeah, yeah, and the second half was certainly a more interesting side to watch. And and to kind of go back to what you could tell happening on the field, they came out during halftime, and looks like they just snow plowed right up through the middle of the field. And they, they did something to the numbers and, and some of the hash marks so you could actually kind of tell what was happening with the field and where they were. So, um, and especially in an abbreviated halftime, uh, halftime time, kudos to their field crew. But, yeah, it was something. And, man, listen, we're going to get into all of that talking about the Apollos. We're going to talk about this game with the, with the Stallions. We're going to talk about how the Apollos now are the sole undefeated team of the Alliance. Because mm-hmm. the Birmingham Iron lost today. And uh, let's see here. We've got that. We'll talk about maybe how this affects our beloved Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because at the heart of this, this is presented by the Pewter Cast, which is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Although we are talking about the Apollos. Before we get into all of that, though, Ren, I do want to give a quick shout out and a hello to everybody who is joining us live out in Mixler land, listening to the audio feed. Hello to all of you guys over there. And I want to say hello to everybody that is joining us right here on the video feed here on YouTube. You guys are definitely welcome. You guys tear it up there in the chat room. Uh, Several people already going through there. Now, Ren, you asked me a question earlier this week. I don't remember if it was uh, over the phone or we were talking here or whether it was just over text message. But we're four weeks into the season now here with the Alliance, mm-hmm. with the developmental league, with the companion league, the complementary league. There you um, go. You the, yeah, the, uh, the, the newness has, I think, started to wear off. Like we're, I think everybody's kind of settling into the groove here with mm-hmm. the Alliance and what we're doing here at the Alliance. Um, also this week, pretty big week around, at, you know, the NFL and that we had the combine going on this week. Right now, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I don't know how the, the viewership turned out, but I'm just curious. Um, 
and, and I know you watched the game. You, you had to because we do this podcast. But where were you finding yourself with this game, knowing that the, com- that the combine was happening at the same time? Uh, how was that going with you? Because I'm not, you know, um, I, I'm interested to talk to people to find out, you know, were they more interested in the combine or were they actually interested in the ball game? Like, how did these two mesh up going head to head against each other? Yeah, I sent out a tweet, you know, earlier, I think it was like maybe Friday or maybe early Saturday that, you know, like you said, I'd be really interested to see what these numbers, these viewing ship numbers are, because this is the first weekend where the NFL, you know, an event, you know, it's not a game, but there's an NFL event that's actually going up head to head against the, you know, the Alliance. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know if it'd be oversaturation, you know, their, their fan base are the hardcore football fans. You know, these people watch college football. They watch the NFL, obviously. Now they have a new league. And if they're uh, if they're somewhere geographically close, they're they're following their team. Mm-hmm. So what happened with me was I didn't watch either of the first and I've watched every game, at least at least half of every mm-hmm. single game. But this week I watched the combine. So I missed the early Saturday game and I missed the early today. Well, you know, we're doing the Sunday game. But I got to watch, you know, but I was all in for the Apollos game. And I watched, you know, uh, into the third quarter of the Hot Shots, uh, who are they playing? The Atlanta Legends game that's, that's going on, probably just finishing up maybe right mm-hmm. now as we're doing this. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be interesting. To see, I felt like it might have been an oversaturation mm-hmm. because, to be honest, uh, I wasn't as hyped for the Apollos game after watching, like, six hours of guys run around in, in, you know, in what are they called? Underwear Olympics. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was, I was a little, I was a little burnt out on, on football because there's no action. And obviously in the combine, you're just sort of looking at scores and trying to look at guys speed and, and their vert. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. once again, it's for the hardcore. So basically they were, they were kind of fighting over the same type of fans. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I, I want to see how it goes. I, I, I feel that I expect that the night games will do okay. Mm-hmm. I think it'll probably be the lowest for the day games but because they were like directly head to head against the NFL combine. Right. Right. And I, I think that's kind of the question that, you know, from an analysis standpoint that I'm really curious about the, the Alliance right now is, are they in a spot where they're attraction and they're gaining more fans week to week to week, or is interest starting to wane, uh, you know, now that the things are because like I said, it really feels like we're settling into the season right? and we're settling into how this works. And by the way, this isn't week four of the Alliance for a lot of us. This is week 26 or so, 25, 26 of football. If we've been following football this entire time. And then if you back it up through camp, that's even more. Uh, you know, all the way back through January, it's just been nonstop since then. So I'm curious. I'm just curious to see how, you know, how fan interest is is uh, playing out right now. I think what's helping is that. Well, I you know I don't care if if, if it's helping the Pollers are undefeated because I want them to be undefeated because mm-hmm. you know they're my team. But I I think it helped that the Express won a game. You know, mm-hmm. and it looks like Atlanta at least when I left. W- w- uh, was leading the hot shots because after two weeks, it kind of went like, Oh wow, this is going to be like, there's only like three teams that have a chance to win this, mm-hmm. you know? And obviously that's a way too early over analysis and lazy, but uh, now we're, you know, we're, we're four weeks in and the comp- the competition is starting to level off. You know, the Apollos blew out people. What was it like 29 points and 40 points in their first two games. Mm-hmm. And now they sort of settled in. Uh, you know, of course, the last one was in the snow, but uh, so I think that helps the league at the, that it's it's there's competition everywhere. You right. know, it's 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 not something where, oh, OK, it's the Apollos versus the the legends. This game is going to be close. You know, I guess I'll go mow the lawn because I have to do it today at some time. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. And, and then on the converse side of that, um, with the Apollos now being undefeated, uh, maintaining a, a you know, they're four and However, these aren't blowout games that they've mm-hmm. been winning. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, even these last two weeks, like they were, it, you know, the, the point spread may be about 10 points or so, but that's not as big in the Alliance as it is, as we're used to with the NFL, 
you know, if, if a team is up 10 points in the NFL, that's a pretty big spread. And the Alliance, it doesn't seem like that's... Because uh, a touchdown, every touchdown is worth eight. Right. And then if they get the, the two point, that's 10. No, no, no. Sorry. Back that up. It's worth eight. Yeah. You're right. It's worth eight. But uh, uh, yeah, and, and it just, it seems like it's not that big of a... Yeah, there's a lot of oddball scores, and because you're used when you watch an NFL game and you watch it, and you're like, okay, the team's up 21 to 29, mm-hmm. five minutes left, they got this in the bag, but then you really kind of realize, like, wait, that's just a touchdown. Yeah, you know, and it's and it just becomes like it's just a touchdown because they always have to go for two. So, but I have, I still am a little shocked about how many two point conversions are not actually converted. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, know, you brought that up. You brought that up last week, especially in the context of um, several people the, often say some people that you and I respect guys, quite a bit. Yeah, um, the, and I have often kind of retouted it. Not that I've ever gone in and done the research on it and done the math on it, but the idea that that statistically speaking, you're better just to go for it every single time and go for the two point every single time. Because mm-hmm. even though you'll miss it from time to time, in the end, you still come out with more points at the end of the day. Um, but in reality, what we're seeing here, at least with the Alliance, that doesn't seem to be working out so well, though. Mm-mm. Yeah, six six seems to be the norm, mm-hmm. not the outlier. Okay, let me ask you this. One of the things we talked about, wait a minute, let me pause, because I want to come back to this conversation. Um, for anybody who is out there listening and wants to call in, phone lines open. You guys can do that. Just interrupt us. We'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. 864-729-BUCKS. That's 864-729-2827. We would love to take your call if you're out there and uh, have thoughts on the game. All right. So we're talking about this uh, two-point conversion thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people call in. One of the things we hear is, oh, I I like this change in the rules. I like this change in the rules. We've often talked about liking the idea that they got to go for it every time. It seems to make it a little more exciting. Do you still like the fact that they have to go for it every time, even though they're not catching it? Uh, or would you rather just let them have the option and use the strategy of do I go for it here or do I um, just kick the field goal and get the freebie? I like going for two. I, I like forcing them going for two. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it just like you said, a two point swing is a lot bigger than a one point swing. And when you miss the two point conversion, it's a two point swing. You know, when you miss an extra point, it's a one point swing. You know, you can you can make that up with a a two point conversion. Right. So (laughs) like once you miss your first two point conversion, there's no making those points back up like Mm -hmm. they're just gone. Right. So uh, I I just I think it adds another element. I think it's even it adds an element of strategy, I think a strategy or or strategy. Uh, You know, it's it's it just makes it more fun to watch, at least for me. It might be just because it's new. But plus, the NFL has been trying to make the extra point more exciting or Mm -hmm. or make it a play that counts. I think they've done well by pushing it back. Mm-hmm. To a thirty-three yarder, and and you know us as Buck fans, we've we've seen plenty of missed extra points the past few years since sure. they moved it back. But uh, so you know that does add sort of, I guess, an element of an excitement to it, but not nearly as much as having to go for it for two every time. Mm-hmm. Because still in the NFL, missing an extra point is an outlier. And and like I said, okay, it's not the end of the world because when you score, then you can go for two. And then you're right back on track where you were mm-hmm. or we're supposed I'm, to be, I guess. I'm not so sure that I actually like going for two every time. Like there, I, I think there are a lot of times where I'm sitting there just going, you know, I just rather see, just go out and kick it because it's not a safety issue. You know, some of the rule changes for the Alliance were safety issues. Uh, right. It's part of the reason why they say they don't do the kickoffs. They just put it at 25 and just go. I do like that. I don't yeah, I do. don't miss the kickoff at all. You just look up and boom, there they go. Um, I do like that change, but the, the being able to kick it, I, I don't think that I am enjoying it as much as I did at first when the novelty was still there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. It's, it, it still freaks out the math for me a lot too, but that's, uh, and that's, that's kind of it. it, it yeah. And I think it also leads to this feeling that the Alliance isn't scoring a lot of points or Mm -hmm. scoring a lot of touchdowns. Yeah. Because if the outlier is you actually making the two point conversion, Mm -hmm. 
I mean, two touchdowns is 12 points. You missed two Tony Converti. You look at 12. It's it's kind of like, you know, in your head because you've been programmed for so long. It's like, okay, how'd you do that? Like a mm-hmm. touchdown, a field goal, and a safety? Like it just doesn't seem like right. a lot of points. 14, you're like, oh, they've scored two touchdowns. Right. You know, it's just it's just something you sort of just have to relearn in your head. And, you know, I think there was a game today. It was 11 to 10. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> how? Wait. How does that happen? Uh, 11 touchdown, to 10? two-point conversion, and a field goal? Well, if it's a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal, that's 11 points, right? 11 to 10. And then you get 10. How do you get 10, though? How do you get 10? Yeah. A safety? Was it 11 you get, to 9? You get a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a safety? <laughs> That's, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's weird. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. What are we like all all the scorings are off. Yes, all the yeah, scorings are off. right. Yeah, but but I mean, more than just the math. Like, I I just don't I don't know that I am. I don't know that I I don't know that I see it as being a big deal. You know, like I see and to go, go back to the kickoff thing, I get why they took out the kickoffs. I like actually the game better without the kickoffs. I don't know that I understand why they took out the kick in the first place. Cause I don't think that that was a safety issue. Um, I don't I think they're trying to do a more exciting brand of football okay. because, uh, cause an extra points a boring play. Right. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's, it's that sort of uh Hey, this is an instant cast type show, right? Like it's, it, 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 that's just kind of the, I was having that thought as I was going through this game. Like, I just don't, Really know that 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 one is is kicking me, but I'm glad to know that it is for other people um, because I certainly am not the end all be all on these things. But hey, let's talk about this game here a little bit. We already talked about a little bit snowing all over the place, uh, people sliding all over the field. That opening drive, um, I think the I think the Apollos went three and out, and guys were just sliding all over the field due to the snow. Mm -hmm. And I remember having this thought, like, so the first two weeks of the Apollos year the first two two games they came out they had a real slow start and then they got yeah. to about the second quarter and everything turned on and you know the sun and gun fun and gun whatever they're calling it these days kicks into action points start getting scored and away we go and then last week in the game three they had they scored back to back on their opening drive and then it kind of mellowed out for a while and then they came on in the third quarter but yesterday it was almost like it was back to that first two weeks thing where it was going to be a slow start, they're having issues, kind of figuring out what was going, what was happening with the ball. Um, and I, I was, I was thinking, I was like, okay, is this a uh, going backwards to that having a slow start, or is this just game condition or field conditions? Yeah, I, I talked a little bit about in the opening, and I think it's exactly what happened. Like they yeah. knew it was going to snow, they were going to try to run the ball, you know, eat up the clock, and mm-hmm. and and hey, we're just going to power football past you guys. And just beat you into submission with the run game. Mm-hmm. And then they went like three and out. And then I'm not sure if they went three and out on the, on the second one or not, but uh, they, they didn't go anywhere on the offense. Like mm-hmm. they didn't put any kind of meaningful drive together. And then, you know, Spurrier decided like, hey, well, let's uh, fun and gun or not. Like uh, we're supposed mm-hmm. to have the advantage of this type of weather because the receivers know where they're going and the defenders don't. Let's throw in anyway. And uh, that's what happened. And there was mm-hmm. a lot of, I thought Gilbert, especially in the second half, really sort of acclimated to the weather. There was a lot of touch passes. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't firing him in there. He was sort of like, okay, I see you got to step on the linebacker. I'm just going to float it out in front of you. And you sort of make the, you know, little adjustment to it. And since the field is so slippery, uh, you know, and covered in snow, the safeties or the corners weren't able to close on those guys in time. And, Mm-hmm. I just I was I came away at the end of the game being impressed by by Gilbert's touch and sort of be able to to make the passing game work. Yeah. And once they got the passing game going, it opened up for the running game. Uh, uh, Cream Hunt, you know, looked like the back Akeem we expect Hunt. him to be. Excuse Akeem me. Hunt. Akeem, Akeem Hunt. Hunt. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> not that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the other look, guy. It's look, not the same guy. Guys. Yeah. Look like the back we expect him to be. And, you know, Dernis Johnson had a good game. Mm-hmm. You know, the wide receiver Johnson went over 100 a yards game. again. Yeah. You know, it was just, you know, 
at the end of the game, you kind of looked at it and you're like, you sure this game was played in the snow? Mm-hmm. And I think we, as in you and I, mm-hmm. and I, I and, you know, I, I don't I'm follow, there's a little bit of Apollo Twitter out there. Obviously, it's not like fucking mm-hmm. Aaron's Twitter, but I don't think that the Orlando defense is getting enough praise for keeping these games like low scoring. I don't think anyone scored 20 points on us yet. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's like the Stallions were moving the ball in the first half. Right. You know, and they were they were they were they were putting together drives, but then, you know, halftime comes, you look up and they have three points. Right. You know, and it's just it's just right. all right. You know, the defense, especially these last two games, have have really been been keeping the Apollos in this and it's it's a becoming you watch them, the Apollos, and like I said, I've seen just about every single game. I can't tell yet if it's coaching or talent or a combination, probably a combination of both, but they just look like the best team. Do they? Because I, I, I have not watched the other teams. Uh, kind of true to form, I follow the team that I follow, and I don't really follow the rest of them. Um, so I haven't really looked at looked really at the others. So you you think that the Apollos look like the best team in the league? And I think it, and I think it all sort of comes around to the quarterback play, okay, and this this and the systems they're in. Sure, you know, two teams have already switched quarterbacks. The legends switched tonight. They finally went to uh, Andy Murray. Okay, after sticking with Sims after three games, uh, we were there when we when they finally benched Hackenberg mm-hmm. and uh, went with with uh, Metzenberger, mm-hmm. uh, and he played and got the the line, or excuse me the Memphis Express first win. Yeah, so not you know, against us, he got them. Yesterday. Yeah, this week, this week yeah. against the fleet in overtime. So, right. you know, and it's not like Gilbert's lighting up the league like Kurt mm-hmm. Warner did. And, you know, in the arena league, it's just it's it's he has some pro experience. He's competent every week. You can see him getting faster through his progressions, getting more comfortable in Steve Spurrier's offense. And I will continue to say this forever that you can't stop Steve Spurrier off for offense by rushing five. Like mm-hmm. it just cannot be done. Right, right. And I don't have this week's game book in front of me uh, with all the stats and everything that they send out to us. I'm really curious with Gilbert, especially uh, how he's doing as far as how many like QB hits he's taken. Um, he hasn't really taken a whole lot of sacks. I think he might maybe have like an average of a little bit less than one per game. Um, maybe right over. I'm not really quite sure. But I, I was thinking, I, I was having this thought as I'm watching them, because I think you're right. The quarterback play with Gilbert it really has been uh, outstanding. Whether he's throwing the ball, whether he's uh, handing it off, or whether he's running running it himself. Um, and the the only thing I'm really concerned about with him there is he does not know how to slide, and it doesn't seem like he knows how to get out of bounds when he's running the ball. Like he just takes the hit, and he seems to take like awkward hits too. Yeah, I feel you, but I I don't at this level of competition. Uh-huh. I, I don't. I really. I doesn't matter. You don't me. think so? Like, well, I mean, I don't want to. I'm not wishing injury uh-huh. on on Garrett Gilbert, but right. if he goes down, I'm not going to be soul crushed. Oh, there goes our season. You know, <laughs> okay, it's like <laughs> you know, it's like Spurrier's got another guy. You know, yeah. that's obviously not quite as good, but but he's probably right there. You know, they got Austin Appleby, and 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 they'll right. be fine. Right. And the and the only thing I go back to, I think I mentioned this, is I remember, you know, I remember having a conversation with uh, uh, Garrett Gilbert, a conversation. It was in the press conference with Garrett Gilbert about that and his attitude. And I've heard this through several of his answers with things is as a quarterback, like I'm a football player, too. I take hits. I give hits. I pop up. I pop down, uh, you know, uh he did get a little fiery though a couple of times. He took some late shot against the Stallions. Yeah, yeah. And he, was, and, he was barking back. And that, our, old, it, uh, our old buddy uh, Silver Sigula. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Salinga is how you pronounce that. And no, I was, not. huh? No, it's not. It is absolutely how you pronounce that. And it, it was it was real funny because the two guys that were commenting on the game, one of them actually read the pronunciation card and he was saying it correctly. And you would never know that it's pronounced Salinga unless you read the pronunciation card because yeah. there is no in actually in his name. Yeah. And the other guy yeah. obviously didn't because he just kept calling him Siliga or Saligia or her saliva. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he had the silver down part. Silver. Silver. 
Silver Silver Saliga. Yeah, we had fun with that name. Uh huh. Uh huh. And now we're talking about it again. Holy crap. Um, but yeah. So so Silver Saliga, um, Saliga Salinga, Silver Salinga. Uh, yeah, he was back in. He was in Gilbert's face quite a bit. I that might have actually been what was the impetus for me kind of making this note of. I'd be really curious to see what Gilbert, um, what his like knockdown rate is, what his QB hit hit rate is. Because, like, I was trying to look a little bit at the the offensive line, and this is—is is there think, a place where we could find this stuff yet? I don't think so. I know. I it's don't like, think so. Yeah, I know it might be a little bit of overkill, and not many people would sort of look this stuff up. Uh huh. You know, you know our, our our buddy friend of the show, Tom Alexander. He probably has all that stuff. Sure, but it's all hard copy, and as we put it, like, I don't know if it's anywhere out there on the net. It may be on Reddit somewhere, mm-hmm. like somebody that just, you know, is just a, a stats hardcore guy that just wants to put it out there. I somebody saw somebody like who's keeping their own stats, you mean? Yeah. And then, yeah. and then put him, yeah. And then watching each game and putting them out there. Or maybe they have friends that have hard copies and they uh-huh. email it to him or whatever. I saw somebody who I follow on Twitter, an NFL guy. Yeah. He put all of the AA, all of the Alliance rosters uh-huh. in Madden. And you can download them and play them. Oh, really? For PlayStation Four only, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he well. gave them. He graded them out and and slapped them all and and uploaded them to Madden. To Madden. So all there's right. that. Well, there you go. So, but anyway, my my point in that all saying, I'm kind of like I, I'm an offensive line guy. So I was just trying to like, how is I wonder how this offensive line is really doing for the Apollos. Like I'm in that spot. I'm in that spot with the Apollos where I'm starting to like game by game focus right. on this unit and this unit and look at this unit. You can't do it all in one game unless you're going to go back to a big film study, which I'm not. But I, I am starting to look at the different units and see how they're how they're performing. Yeah. Now we want to talk about this stuff. Look, yeah, like we've learned the players. We know the guys to watch now, even some of the other guys around in the league. Like we know the offense. We can see what the defense is doing. Sorry, I had a, I had a, they tried, did you get a schedule upgrade on your, on your computer? No, uh -uh. I just had a pop-up like, I'm going to, I'm going to download and upgrade your computer. I'm like, no, you're not. So, but now's the time where I want to start digging into these sacks and see, like you said, Mm -hmm. which offensive line is protecting better, which defensive line is protecting better. Uh, I talked about how our defense isn't getting a lot of love uh, because there has been long drives almost every game where it seems that they don't get a lot of three and outs. Mm-hmm. Like they don't, and they get and the and the teams run the ball on them. It feels like pretty successfully, right? But I'd be able to. I want to go somewhere uh-huh. and be able to see if I'm right. Like right. you know, I can't eyeball test. Like, look, I love the Alliance. I'm not going to DDR four games a week and go back and and handwrite stats. I'm <laughs> right, not going right. to do it. There ain't no way. Right. So. I would really like to see a spot somewhere where you, where we can where we can find that, and this is the stuff we we can talk about mm-hmm. because we're we are now past the uh, we're now past like talking about the rules, talking about the uniforms. Mm-hmm. Hey, this guy was good. Hey, this guy isn't good. We're we're now to the part where we need to start talking about 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 the teams and how right. they're built and what they're good at and what they're you can, we can start talking about matchups, you know. It's like all I really know about the iron coming up next week is that they have a good defense. Right. They probably have the best defense in the league. That's right. about it. But what makes I mean, that defense good? Is it, is it a defensive line that's always in the face of your quarterback and they're blown past offensive line? Is it a secondary that is just covering up the receivers and, and yeah, the secondary you know, covering up for the pass yeah, rush. Is is it a run? You know, are they just stuffing the run and nobody can run the ball? And I'm like, what is it that's making their, their defense, one of the best defenses in the league. All right. I understand they're not giving up any points, but now we're to the point where it's like, why? How? Yeah. 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 So we need that yeah. information. That and, and I feel like, like on some level, like we're starting to get to know the players better. You know, like I, I can start kind of rattling off some of the, the names of the players. There's Gilbert and uh, there's Okine over on, on the defensive line. There's Ansa. There's uh, Will Hill, who, by the way, went out with an injury in this past game. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, Dernish Johnson, Davion Smith, and Akeem Hunt is the running backs. There's 
Uh, who is it? Jalen Marshall, Charles Johnson. There's the wide receivers. Dante Die. Shout out Dante Die getting a touchdown. Double D. Yeah, DD. DD is uh, Cutter always called him. Um, and we can't forget about Reyes, their best corner. Oh, yeah, Razor. Who, who, is it Razor? Razor, yeah. Can't forget about the guy's name I mispronounced. <laughs> right. I don't know how to but say it, it, but I know it's him. <laughs> he dropped his third pick to end the game. Like, it hit him right in the chest. It yeah. would have been, I mean, that has to lead the league. Right. And dropped dropped interceptions? Yeah. No, right. no. I mean, he has two already. Right. And he, like, dropped the third one. It would just end of the game. It's like, hit him right in the chest. But anyway. But, yeah, like like you said, we're, we're getting to know these players. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to sort of take the step and move on. Right. So we can talk about like more of the X's and O's. Right. You know what I think would make watching the Alliance and Alliance. You guys are listening to every episode of Showtime with the Apollo. So here's my two cents. You know what I think would make the would make the Alliance a far more interesting watch. Is if they had the week to week cameras there with the teams. That we actually dive into what's happening with this league throughout the week. Kind of like a hard knocks or an all or nothing. Or like uh, how Casey Phillips with the Buccaneers does like the one minute like Bucks beat. Yeah, only not one minute. Like, give me a half hour show or a twenty minute show or something that that you know. Hey, here's this player and this player and what these guys are doing and here's yeah. I don't the, think they want to the, do that. Oh no, I don't. I know they don't want to do that. But what I'm saying is like because I was I've been watching some of the all or nothings uh, after they you know we hired Bruce Arians with Tampa Bay. I went and watched that all or nothing and I kind of got hooked. And so I've been watching some of the other ones and Mm -hmm. it really changes how you look at the season. Um, Of course, those come out well after the season is over, but you got hard knocks, which is happening through training camp. Like it ends on Sunday and like that episode's out by Tuesday. So they are able to turn it around. I would not watch any of those of the Alliance. You wouldn't? No, I bet they, I bet they could figure out how to do it. I think it would make the, I think it would make watching the Alliance far more interesting. It costs too much money. I'm not saying that it's feasible. I'm yeah, saying from an entertainment value as a consumer, it would make watching the Alliance far and more. It, and to be quite honest, I don't care about these players enough. But see, that's why you need the hard knocks type episode. Because, no, because I yes, don't. because remember in it. training camp, no, but in training camp, you get to know all these players that you don't care about. And all of a sudden you start caring about them. And that's how people Brent, like Brent. I'm a huge football fan. I've never watched a hard knocks besides the Buccaneers. I've never watched an all or nothing. And there's one on my head coach that I'm going to cover next year. And I still haven't watched it yet. Oh, you should watch it. It's really good. Sure. (laughs) I'll give you my prime password. Go ahead. uh, Mike Flowers in the chat says the stats are on the site. Okay. They're not on the app because I check the app all the time for those stats. Mm -hmm. And they're not on there. So I guess I guess. uh, I guess if we go on the the Alliance site, that they're there. So mm-hmm. yeah, he, yeah, he dropped the link. If anybody out there is wondering, it's just aaf dot com forward slash Orlando dash Apollos forward slash stats. So uh, I'm not going to click on else, that. something else. We should have probably looked up. Probably, probably. Have we mentioned this is just a side project for us? It is. Yes, this is very much. <laughs> This is welcome to the off season of the NFL, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but seriously, um, uh, this should be a really fun game coming up against the Birmingham Iron. Yeah, um, because of their defense, and and uh, I think he's he's it's really going to push. Uh, this might be the first visor throw of the uh, of Steve Spurrier's Alliance career coming up this game because. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you know, because he only does it when the court when he gets frustrated with the quarterbacks, right? And uh, uh, you know, looking at the, but the problem with the iron, they they just can't score, man. Mm-hmm. Like I've been watching them, you know, I've seen them, mm-hmm. and everyone talked about their quarterback. He like uh, almost went to like Oklahoma State on a bowling scholarship. A bowling decided, scholarship? Yeah, he's so obviously he's a really good bowler, but he went to like wow. a smaller school to play quarterback, you know, and you know, misses window or got passed over and, you know, everyone just kind of likes him in the meetings for his maturity and says the right things and stuff. But then you watch a couple of games and he's Alex Smith. Like mm-hmm. he drops back in the pocket. And as soon as his foot sets, he makes his first read when it's not there, he breaks containment and then he checks down and that's what he does. And, but this defense keeps him in games. So as long as they didn't turn the ball over, they got a chance to win. But I just, I just, 
once again, I still don't think it's going to hold up against Spurrier's offense. You can't. You got to. You're going to have to score. You're just going to have. to Is score. Spurrier's offense going to be able to go up against this defense? Well, yeah. I mean, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Even it, it's funny. It's like you watch this Salt Lake game, right? Mm-hmm. And you're and you know they only scored 20 points. Like, oh wow, they held Spurrier's offense down. Well, I'm pretty sure they scored on four straight possessions. And the fifth one, when they had it, they were trying to run the clock out. Okay. Right. Because, like, like they were, like, three. I don't know if they went back-to-back three and out, but they didn't score, didn't score. And then I think they kicked back-to-back field goals. They and might have had, like, a mini drive right before halftime. Okay. Come out at halftime, uh, and then they score touchdowns. But in between there, the uh, Stallion scored a touchdown. and the, And it eats up a lot of clock. And, mm-hmm. you know, so. And these clock, the clocks in the Alliance aren't stopping as frequently as they do. Yeah, in they're the not. NFL. They're not. Yeah. Because the time, by the time they, the Alliance got the ball the third time, there's about five and a half, six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to just grind it out. Right. And they picked up like two or three first downs, uh, right. <clears throat> missed mm-hmm. on like a third and seven. They got a like third and six. And they end up punting it away. And then I think that they shut, the, you know, they shut down the Steins and got the ball back and mm-hmm. game's over. So, and I mean, and that's part of where we saw Akeem Hunt come out, you know, during the, he, I don't think we saw him until the fourth quarter, um, but it, he had a good game from from what from the part that he got in, but he didn't come in until really late in the game. He lost it now. What I think makes this a little bit interesting, he lost his starting gig because he was the starter starting running back the first two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, did not perform well at all during those slow starts and lost that starting gig. And now we see him come out in the fourth quarter. But, man, he came out had a strong quarter, but he looked fresh coming into the game because uh, mm-hmm. he hadn't played, on honestly. Um, but he looked fresh. He looked hungry. He looked ready to go. And I'll be interested to see if he can maybe reclaim that starting spot as the season goes on. Um, and then also, is there just – is there something to this keeping a, a running back fresh for late in the game, especially if you're just trying to run out the clock? Well, you know, I watch a lot of Steve Spurrier football when he, well, you know, I told you about it. Sure. Or on the earlier podcast, how we went to all the bandits games and he was head coach there for three years. Uh, then he went to Duke and came to UF and, you know, our family is a Florida a Gator family. So I mm-hmm. watch a ton of Steve Spurrier games. Uh, when he was at the University of Florida, and 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 interchanging running backs throughout the game is not is 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 something C. Spurrier does. It, it's it's mm-hmm. nothing new. Um, you watch NFL games, and you sort of got a first and second down back and a third mm-hmm. down back. Mm-hmm. Spurrier does it. He's got like two first and second down backs. Actually, he's got he's got two guys that are first, second, and third down backs, and right. he just sort of like rides the hot hand. Right. Or when he feels it, it's like, well, you know, hey, Dermis Johnson, you you have played for, you know, two and a half quarters now. Uh, Kareem Hunt, uh, Akeem Hunt is, uh, he's looking pretty upset. You know, he hasn't got the ball yet. And like you said, he made it, he took advantage of his opportunities. So Mm. it's nothing new for Spurrier to just, you know, spread the ball around. It's just what he does. Right. You know, you, you use the guys now, that you have and put them in the best position to make play. Okay, so let's compare this to what we just experienced with Dirk Cutter in Tampa Bay. We'll bring this back to the Bucks just a little <laughs> bit, okay? One of the complaints that we had about Cutter was that it seemed like just because you were on the roster, he felt obligated to give you a certain amount of playing time and, and you know, okay, yeah, it's, no matter who's hot man. right now, it's Jacquez Rogers' turn to have the ball, so we're going to give him the ball. Yeah. So how are these you like, because it sounds very similar to me with what you're talking about, uh, but I'm not pissed off at Spurrier for doing it with the Apollos. Well, because, because they work. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, because right. it works. And, and and that's sort of the difference. Like if if they go to, it, I, I, it's hard to explain. It's probably because the Bucks are always losing. Uh-huh. <laughs> And it's like, well, we're going to pull up Peyton Barber because, like you said, it's Chris Rogers' time to run. Or oh, we're going to run a jet sweep, but uh, we got Dante Die double D, on the team, and he's mm-hmm. fast. So we're going to give it to him instead of Deshaun Jackson because he he tries really hard in practice and deserves to touch the ball in a game. You know, that's the kind of stuff that used to drive us crazy. Right. With uh, 
it, and you just can't it's it's just sort of hard to argue with Spurrier with his track record because his team always puts up points and no mm-hmm. matter who touches the ball or who has the ball it's like it's it's a positive play right and it's and it's play calling it's coaching and and he's just a good ball coach man yeah i mean it well it's that old thing like if you're winning nobody really cares <laughs> right like exactly as, lo- as long as you're winning as long as everything's working you're you, no one cares if you start losing that's when everybody starts getting a little a little ants a- antsy for it so all right. Uh, well, I'm looking down my list here, and that's really, I think, all the notes I have on this game. Did you have anything else about this game you wanted to talk about? Or not anything really. in previewing I mean, for this, fall, this next week that we haven't done already? Not really. I mean, I, mean yeah. I know this is sort of a shorter pod, but, you know, no one called in, sure. uh, which I wasn't surprised. I think this is sort of going to fall in line to what – it's like the oversaturation. Sure. Uh, not so much of, of everyone's, like – the shine has worn off the Alliance. Mm-hmm. I just feel that everyone was all in at the combine. Yeah. And then interest will be picked, you know, will be picked back up uh, next weekend because let, let's face it. Oh, one thing I would like to talk about. Remember how last episode I talked about how I thought the Alliance was doing a terrible job of putting like, of not showing showcasing yeah. the Apollos. Yep. And they had like, they had like four games on Bleacher. Yeah. I was, th- I was thinking about you this week when, when this switch happened. Yeah, so uh, this week they got switched to the NFL Network. Uh-huh. It was supposed to be on Breach Report Live, so they switched. They got the late got game flexed. Saturday. Yeah, they got flexed, and then next, next week, week uh-huh. it's going to TNT. Yeah, late yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, so I'm glad they listened. They actually, to the pod. I think for next week they actually switched the planned time as well to accommodate the TV schedule. Oh, did they? Yeah, I think like they changed their game? game time. Yeah, I think. I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. Or maybe it was this – one of these two weeks, they, they didn't just change where they were being broadcast. They actually, like, flexed the game for the broadcast. Yeah, so the, so that's good to see. Yeah. And, uh, you know, more eyeballs and all, all that stuff is, is going to work out. But, mm-hmm. uh, um, yeah, I think, you know, as far as, as the Apollos and the Alliance go, we're, it's, we're sort of turning the corner now, and this is going to be uh, something where – it's it's going to become more of an X's and O's type of podcast, sure. you know, something that we we thought it was going to be, uh-huh. you know, when when we first started, but you know, it was just like it was, you know, just like jumping in the swimming pool, like yeah. for the first time. It's like, <laughs> well, where are we going with this one? Right? Like 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 what? Okay, who who are these guys? Memphis. Uh-huh. Okay, who's their quarterback? All right, do I know that guy? You know, mm-hmm. so and it was a lot about the coaches. So. um yeah, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to going forward with this pod and, and be able to bring some new stuff. But uh, uh, this week was uh, you know, I was all with in the, on the combine. combine. Yeah, I was yeah. all it was all about the combine. combine. Right, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I think the well, let's hear. It. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that's it. All right. Well, Ren, why don't we go ahead and call it, man? I think that's it. Listen, the 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 Orlando Apollo. Is this our first Instacast without a caller, like th- ever? Like with the Bucks or or uh, the that, Apollo, that might be true. That might I think be true. It is. That, unless it well, like we may have had like a special like impromptu instant cast where we just opened it up while we talked about something that just dropped. Um, those may not have had a caller, but not not as far as a scheduled um, scheduled caller, a scheduled televised event, right? So um, yeah, I think I think you might be right on that one. So, all right, guys. Well, listen, next week, uh, the Orlando Apollos travel to Birmingham, Alabama, where they'll be taking on the Iron, who just lost their first game of the season. So it, it's it, they're going to be playing at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So that, that might have been the flex there, Ren. Uh, they'll be playing 2 p.m. on Eastern time on Saturday. That'd be March the 9th on TNT. You can do that. And then the Apollos uh, will come home the following week where they'll be facing the Arizona Hot Shots, who just lost to the Atlanta Legends. Uh, Worst the- uniforms in the league. There you go. Three shades of purple. And um, On one uniform. Honestly, the Hot Shots aren't much better. Anyway. Oh, the Hot Shots are awful. Oh, yeah. But yeah. you can't say that because, like, they're in memory of, sure. you know. The it's the color different- combination. It's the color combination. Oh, yeah. It's the color combination. It really is. Yeah, Yeah. it's the color combination. And I know they had to throw the red in there for the fire, but it was Mm -hmm. bad. 
But yeah. it's really hard to say that because it's sort of a tribute. They had a big, actually, halftime tribute to uh, some smoke jumpers that lost their lives back in 2013. Did they? They retired the number 19. Like, no one uh, can wear the number 19 for the hot shot. Well, good for them. Good for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, however, uh, this is coming. And, and I'm out here going, your uniforms are god-awful. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> uh, but this will also be coming off the Birmingham Iron, which a lot of people are saying that the Iron is their favorite uniform in the Alliance. So, Which I um, also don't get. But anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So, you guys can join us for that. Uh, and we will uh, we'll be back with you guys next Sunday night, 10 o'clock, right here on YouTube, right here on Mixler. Of course, you can always download the podcast feed later as well. Uh, you guys call in. We'll talk about the Bucks, Or we'll talk, talk about the Bucks. No, we will talk about the Apollos. And their game, and we'll do it without the specter of the combine hanging over top of us over the course of the weekend as well. So until then, guys, go Apollos, take aim. We'll talk to you guys next time.